Hello, uh, just a quick video today. Um, as you can see, my desk is quite messy and I want to tidy it up, but unfortunately all the stuff on here is uh, involved in the um, thing that I'm going to be talking about, so I want to get that video done and I can clear up my desk and get some space back again. Um, a few months ago I bought a Commodore 128 DCR. Uh, it's got a number of faults. The most obvious and irritating one of it is the video output is messed up. So when you see some screen captures in a moment, you'll see that the picture is in black and white because I can either have a very colourful picture with all the colour bleeding and everything blurry, or I can have a sort of sharp black and white picture. And for what we're doing today, the sharp picture is better. Um, but the problem I'm trying to address today is the fact that this is French, um, and that means it's got a lot of weird Frenchnesses. Um, so I'd like to get those sorted out and try and make it uh, a bit more English, shall we say. Um, partly because that will probably become illegal to be French after Brexit in a couple of weeks. So uh, anyway, let's have a look at this problem. Okay, so uh, an international Commodore 128 has two modes. Um, the first is the so-called ASCII one, which has a sort of US-UK keyboard layout with QWERTY. You get a pound symbol. Um, but you can only display uppercase characters in this by default. Um, you can swap to get lowercase characters by pressing Shift and Commodore. Um, then you can type lowercase letters, hold down the Shift key, and type uppercase letters. Um, but rather oddly, in a sort of thing going back to the Commodore PET, they don't have a caps lock key, they've just got a Shift lock key. So if you want to lock in to get uppercase letters, um, you can do that. But when you press things like the number keys you actually just get the punctuation symbols which is a bit irritating. Um, so now on an international one if you push this button up here you swap to the country code mode and what this does is um, it swaps in the keyboard layout for whatever country it was sold in instead. So now my keyboard uses these uh, extra characters which are printed in grey um, where they replace the black ones so now I no longer get uh, QWERTY, I get a Zerty, which is very French. Um, the M key has gone over here, um, so my M key is now a comma. Um, and if you press the number keys, you now get punctuation and sort of accented uh, French symbols. If you want to get the numbers, um, you have to hold down Shift. Uh, that's an experience anyone who's been on holiday to France and tried to use a computer has probably uh, had. But the other thing you can notice about pressing this uh, mode button is that the font on the screen also changes to kind of a completely different one. And what it does is, firstly, as well as looking slightly different, it replaces some of the accented French characters with uh, graphical symbols in places. Um, a pound symbols go away and get changed into a backslash. Um, and that's all sort of a bit irritating because I can't really use that button um, for anything. Um, but apparently on a sort of UK and US model, um, this button would actually act as a caps lock key um, and leave the keyboard layout the same as it, it was before. So what I want to do is try and convert this to be um, a sort of UK, US model and then have the keys operate as normal and, and get rid of the Frenchness. Okay, uh, just switching to 80 column mode, the um, operation is much the same um, except that uh, you don't have to swap the whole character set out to swap between upper and lower case. So I can type in um, uppercase letters and the extra symbols you get by pressing shift. Um, if I press the shift and Commodore key, uh, nothing sort of apparently happens in the way it does in 40 column mode where everything shifts to lower case. Um, but now I can type lowercase letters and I can use shift to get the uppercase letters and the symbols stay on the screen as they did before because um, you can have additional number of characters, I think it's 512 in the 80 column mode. Um, however, if I push the country code key, then all the sort of symbols change to the ones in the um, French character set, and the font changes as it did before. Um, I can type lowercase letters with the French keyboard layout. Um, I can use shift to get the uppercase letters. Um, if I press shift and Commodore to go back to uppercase mode, then it goes back to uppercase mode, um, but you don't lose the lowercase characters. I can type the um, keys with the graphical symbols on and things. So it's sort of very much the same, except you don't 
you can have all the characters available all the time. The, the button's really kind of just changing the font and the shift and Commodore key is really just changing whether you're typing in upper or lower case. So it's a, a slightly kind of odd experience, um, but it all kind of makes sense. Okay, so I did a bit of digging around on the internet and found out this is uh, controlled by the system ROM. That contains things like the keyboard uh, decode table and the operation of the country code key. Um, on the DCR, that's this chip here, which is a single 32K uh, ROM chip on the ordinary 128D, the non-cost uh, reduced version, then that's apparently a pair of 16K chips. So what I had this idea of doing was downloading that ROM image and then burning it to an EEPROM and then uh, popping it in and seeing what the effect would be. Okay, so uh, this is where my trusty BBC Micro comes into the uh, story. So with this and my vintage EEPROM programmer, which I've done another video about, uh, I can take a blank 27256 EEPROM, which is a 32K EEPROM, and then I could load in the ROM image for a Commodore 128 DCR for a UK US model and ask the BBC Micro to burn that to an EEPROM and fortunately the BBC didn't seem to mind it was burning a Commodore ROM and at the end of it I had a uh, Commodore 128 32k ROM that I hopefully can replace the French ROM in the 1284 um, and hopefully convert it into a UK model. Okay so uh, to replace the chip I'll uh, just get my venerable little chip puller here and take that out and then take the new chip, which I've put a handy label on, and then pop it in the socket. And then once it all looks lined up, give it a good squidge down. So hopefully that's it. Okay, uh, moment of truth. Let's uh, try turning it on and see if it starts up. Okay, got a boot screen. That's at least promising. It still starts up. Let's try the keyboard um, while I get my QWERTY. Um, if I switch to mixed upper and lower case, I get uh, upper and lower case. But we're in ASCII mode at the moment, not the international mode with the key here. So let's push that. So the font changes again. Um, and we'll type some. Oh, well, those letters seem to be giving symbols. I swap to lowercase mode. Ah, I'm getting some letters. And they at least appear to be the correct letters. I'm not getting a zerty anymore. Um, but where I th should think I'm going to get lowercase letters, I actually seem to be getting uppercase letters. Um, so something not quite right there, but uh, something's improved. At least the keyboard's vaguely correct. Okay, so a bit more nosing about on the internet, and it seems that. Uh, not only is there an international version of the system ROM down here, there's also international versions of the character ROM, which is uh, this chip up here. Um, so I guess those two have to be changed together um, to give the right country, and that probably explains why those two have white labels on, so that they can easily be identified um, because of the different models being built for different countries. So I guess we have to replace the character ROM as well. Um, so back to the BBC. Okay, so another minute in the uh, EEPROM programmer um, to write the character ROM. This time we only needed a 2764 EEPROM because the character ROM is only 8K in size. And uh, we've got a new UK and US character ROM. Okay, so let's uh, turn it back on and see what we've got. So I've got the caps lock key up at the moment and keyboard seems to be doing the normal thing swap to lowercase get the right keys and I've got those characters okay let's push the caps lock key and that's oddly changed the font slightly but not massively uh, so it's not a completely different font like it was with the French version but uh, it is slightly different certain letters like the lowercase i change Anyway, caps lock on, so I've got uh, caps there, take it off, and I get lowercase, so that seems to, oh, let's check the numbers, say lower numbers, caps lock on, oh, and I've still got numbers, and I can get punctuation with shift, so that seems to be behaving like a caps lock key. Uh, let's try coming out of upper and lowercase mode and try the keys again. Okay, now those are behaving just like 
the keys would do with shift pressed um, and the numbers are behaving like numbers but without shift press so it's a bit like the shift key is being used on letter keys but not on number keys so it's not in a way like a true caps lock because I'm still getting symbols when I look at those but um, at least when I put it in upper and lower case mode uh, it does seem to at least behave like a caps lock key. Uh, the font change is a bit odd but uh, there you go, let's check my other keys seem to be the ones they should be. So actually the, the different font kind of fits some of the stuff I've heard um, Bill Hurd, the designer of the Commodore 128 say where he uh, said that they redesigned some of the characters uh, including the lowercase i and that broke software like Koala Paint that relied on the dot being in the right place so possibly this button is somehow sort of changing the font as well to a sort of Commodore 128 font so it's, it's a bit odd I don't know if that is the way that a UK or US uh, Commodore 128 would behave but um, it does seem more sensible at least the keys are where I expect them to be so it's a definite improvement uh, having it adopt the French layout before was not very useful to me so I think that's probably a win okay so we're uh, back in 80 column mode now and um, I've got the 40 80 column button pushed got the caps lock key up and we've just turned on so I'm getting uppercase letters shift and those gives the uh, symbols that are on the keys um, if I push the lowercase mode thing again nothing changes the whole character set like it didn't do last time differently to the 40 column mode but now I'm getting lowercase letters and get uppercase if I use the shift key um, if I push the caps lock key let's see what we get okay so I'm getting capital letters this time I'm getting numbers and I get punctuation still get capitals of these shift in the letters uh, let's go back into uppercase mode but with the caps lock key down so now I'm getting shifted letters again with the symbols but I'm still getting numbers um, oddly though the font is not changing like it was before if I type a lowercase i there oh no there it is so that's a bit strange the font isn't yeah the font is not changing style here which is a bit weird so unlike last time where the font changed it isn't doing it this time so that's a bit weird don't know if that's intentional but anyway the keyboard layout is correct and the caps lock key is working as well so I think we're good again I don't know if that's how it was meant to behave because it's still a little bit odd but um, at least I've got a good UK keyboard layout so I think that's a successful work okay okay one final thing we'll uh, boot the 128 up in Commodore 64 mode which you can do by holding down the Commodore key when you turn on the power now I wasn't really expecting anything to change in this mode um, since there wasn't a caps lock key on the Commodore 64 and indeed I get uppercase letters in the normal uppercase mode, I get lowercase letters uppercase letters when I use the shift if I push the button however the font still changes um, doesn't seem to affect whether I get caps characters or not so it's it's not actually affecting the keyboard layer at all but it is changing the font um, so I don't know if this is normal or not um, certainly if I have the button released and I get the Commodore 128 font you can see that in the lowercase i um, if I press it down I get the original Commodore 64 font um, and that's the same as what happens in the Commodore 128 mode so I don't know if this is normal for a UK US ROM Commodore 128 or whether there's some other sort of difference between one of those and a one with a national uh, keyboard layout and font um, so I don't know maybe there's another modification that needs to be performed to the machine or maybe this is normal but uh, I'm not sure if this is uh, how it's supposed to be but it's certainly acceptable I just have to make sure I push this button if I want the original Commodore 64 experience okay so that's the Commodore 128 the computer with possibly the most confusing caps lock key that I've ever come across or maybe it's just mine with its sort of dual citizenship uh, 
confusion and uh, maybe it's not meant to behave like that. If you had one of these back in the day then, uh, or you've got one and you know how it's supposed to work, it'd be helpful if you could let me know if mine's doing the right thing. Um, I've tried looking at the manual but it doesn't seem to make it very clear. Um, so I hope you found that useful. At least I can get on with tidying my desk. Um, so see you next time.